Hi, I'm Jen Neiman, co-founder of Property Elite, Chartered Surveyor and APC Assessor. At Property Elite, we provide training and support for the APC, Asset RICS and FRICS qualifications. We cover all routes, pathways and geographic regions via our team of specialist consultants and trained assessors. This also includes the senior professional, specialist, academic and direct entry routes. In this week's podcast, I take a look at the RICS Guidance Note Technical Due Diligence of Commercial Property. It's essential listening, particularly for APC and Assault Rooks building surveying candidates, as well as those involved with acquisition due diligence for commercial property purchases. The guidance note took effect from the 1st of April 2020, replacing a number of former, former RICS guidance notes, namely Building Surveys and Technical Due Diligence of Commercial Property 4th Edition in the UK. So technical due diligence is defined by RICS as the systematic review, analysis, discovery and gathering of information about the physical characteristics of a property and or land. This covers instructions such as building surveys, condition inspections, pre-acquisition surveys and vendor surveys. The term structural survey should not be used. Technical due diligence, or TDD, involves an inspection and assessment of a property, followed by a report including the surveyor's professional opinion on condition. The aim of a TDD report is to facilitate the client, i.e. a prospective purchaser or occupier in many circumstances, in making an informed decision from a technical perspective. So, a technical due diligence report can be instructed for the following purposes. To optimise the design of new development or refurbishment to understand condition and design, to establish suitability for use, to understand future repair liabilities and associated costs, to understand risk, to inform price negotiations for an acquisition, to improve health and safety standards and to improve performance and sustainability metrics. A TDD report will consider the short, medium and long-term risks relating to a property. It will also include identification and advice on defects and associated repairs relating to quality issues in design or construction, lack of maintenance, neglect, misuse, remaining economic or useful life, deleterious materials and non-compliance with statutory requirements such as planning or building control. The guidance notes split into key sections, types of inspections, taking instructions, the inspection and the report. The guidance note also defines four types of inspections based on various stages in the property life cycle, being acquisition, occupation and operation, disposal and refurbishment or development. Detail on how TDD should be carried out in each stage is discussed at length. So when taking instructions, surveyors need to be mindful of a number of issues, including but not limited to checking for conflicts of interest, Carrying out money laundering checks. Agreeing terms of engagement, including recording and making the client aware of any practical limitations. Ensuring inspections are carried out safely. Considering the extent of liability. How documents will be reviewed, including potential use of a data room. Establishing the client's requirements, such as tenure, proposed use, report format, coordination and timeframes. The nature of the property to be inspected, such as location, size, access and occupation. And finally, the requirement for any specialist input from consultants and how they will be appointed. Appendix A provides a really helpful checklist for TDD services to be used in conjunction with the RICS short form of consultants appointment for designated services. So when inspecting, the guidance note gives some ideas on the general principles, including note taking, health and safety, site inquiries, extent of inspection, environmental considerations, deleterious and hazardous materials, sustainability, cultural heritage, title and legal issues. The report should cover what, if anything, was wrong, the consequences of anything which was wrong, what repairs are recommended and when they should be completed, who is responsible for any repair costs and whether future investigations are recommended and when they should be undertaken. The guidance note provides further detail on how surveyors' TDD reports should be laid out and structured. This includes the preference to take state clear timeframes and risk ratings. That's it for today's podcast. Remember, you can book in your free 15-minute consultation via our website. 
We can also provide feedback on your referral or prelim review report. If you head to our website, you can also access our other free support resources, including our ebook guides, podcasts, videos, quizzes, blog, and CPD newsletter. We can't wait to work with you, so thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week.